Hello again. I am so glad you joined me today. My name is Karen Slowinski. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I live in Akron, Ohio. So today we are going to be featuring the Deckled Circle dies. These dies are incredible. There are 14 of them. They start out really small, about one inch, and they go really big, almost to, um, almost to six inches. And we're going to be making this beautiful, fun fold card today. But before we dive in and start working on this, I want to thank you to all my new subscribers. Um, this past two weeks has been incredible for me. It's been so exciting to see so many people um, join and become subscribers of my channel and give me wonderful comments. I, I just can't tell you how much it warms my heart. So thank you so much uh, for following me and for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. But I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna start working on these beautiful cards today. Um, I have other cards and other ways to show you how to use these deckled circles. So let's get to it. Let's begin by looking at what we need to make this card. So what I have, obviously I have my envelope and then I have in my shaded spruce, this is a quarter sheet. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And then we'll need two pieces. These are basic white. These are both four by five and a quarter. One is for the inside panel and one is for the back of the card. And then we need two more panels of basic white. And these are what we're gonna use to make these two um, parts of the fun fold. So these are five and three eighths by two and five eighths. Okay, so we're gonna start with this. So there's gonna be five steps for making this. We're going to cut, decorate, score, trim, and then adhere. So let's start with the cutting. So this, these are our deckled circles and I have chosen the second largest. So when we go to cut these, we're gonna place this on our stamp and cut and boss machine, just like this. So it's going right to that top edge and it goes off. It looks like it goes off just a little bit, which is just perfect on both sides. So you're gonna go Cut those out at your stamp and cut and emboss machine on both of those pieces. So I have already done that and I have those two pieces here. So now we are ready to do our stamping. So I'm gonna start with this one first and I have stamped these in the green, the shaded spruce color. So I'm gonna, here, I'll get this so you can see, I'm gonna ink this up this is a pretty large stamp. And then we're just going to place this on our flap. So we're gonna rotate it around so we get different parts of the design. I'm gonna get a little bit over here. I think we're gonna get a little bit there. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna to try to do this one a little bit differently. So I'm gonna turn this one around and I'm gonna stamp this one like that. So it just gives it a different look. Here, let's get this rotated. Mm, that looks pretty good. And then we need just a little bit. I don't think you're gonna see this because of the flap, but that's our pieces. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to um, color this. So I wanna show you the card I made in my last month's card class. So this is the card. I'm gonna open that up. Oops, that's upside down. Sending hugs, all right? So on this one, I used the Sentimental Park and it's a two-step stamp. And obviously when you stamp, you don't see you know, through it on the inside. So my first thought with these was to color them using blends, but that would bleed through. So what I have chosen are our colored pencils. So they come in two different assortments. So there's an assortment one and an assortment two. And the colors from there that I have chosen are the Granny Apple Green, Cherry Cobbler, and the Garden Green. So I'm gonna start coloring those. And then what you're also going to need is one of the blender pens. 
and that will take the marks from the watercolor pencils and smooth it out. So I'm just gonna start coloring. I'm not gonna make you watch all of this, but I'm just gonna show a little bit so you can just see. So I'm gonna color my berries. I'm gonna color um, these leaves with the granny apple green. And then, and you don't have to be really um, perfect when you color because the blender pen is actually gonna smooth out all the lines and bleed it a little bit. So that's gonna look really nice. Oh, I might as well get this one here since I'm right next to it. And then I'm gonna use this one for our, um, our holly. So I'm just gonna color a little bit and then I'm gonna show you how the blender pens work, okay? So the blender pens look like just white markers. And when you um, activate the watercolor pencils, it smooths it out and it looks really pretty. All right, and I think on this one, I'm gonna add also a little bit of that darker green at the base of my leaves, um, gives it a little bit more depth. So I'm just gonna blend that. And now I've got a little bit of that green still left on there, so I'm gonna start out with that at the bottom and I'm gonna blend these out Okay, so you look at how much prettier this looks when you use the blender pen and your watercolor pencils. It really is um, a very wonderful tool. I forget about it half the time because my Stampin' Blends are just so handy. Um, but there you see how that's starting to look nice. Now, I've got green on this tip. All you do is kind of rub it out like that. See how that's um, showing there and you just run it until it's clear and then you can go ahead and switch to your red okay you're going to do the same thing you're going to rub it out till it's clear so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to color this and then i will speed up the camera so that you don't have to watch Okay, I'm finished with my coloring. All right, so we've done the first couple steps. We've cut, we've decorated. Now it's time to score. So I'm gonna grab my trimmer and we are gonna score a half an inch. So you're gonna make sure your cutter is out of the way. And then we're gonna put it at the one half inch line. So I'm gonna put it there, I'm gonna hold it down and use my scoring blade and I'm just gonna score it like that. Same thing with the second one. Put it at the half inch line and score. Okay. We're ready for the next step, which is to trim. So we are going to be putting this on our card. And as you can see, this part sticks out. So what we're gonna do is cut from the score line at an angle like that. It's almost like mitering our corners. So I'm going from the score line and I'm just going in at an angle. So now when we fold that over, we have nothing that would stick out. So I'll take my second one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go from the crease and again, from the crease in toward the center. All right, so then we can give this a good press with our bone folder. And then, then we are ready for adhering. So if you notice when I was coloring, I skipped coloring some of the stuff along here because I knew it was gonna be tucked under and you wouldn't see it. So that's why I skipped those areas. So before we adhere it, I'm gonna take one of my um, four by five and a quarter panels and we're gonna stamp our sentiment. Now, when we do stamp the sentiment, a lot of times when you're doing your cards, you might put a sentiment up high. But for this card, you're gonna to wanna to have your sentiment in the middle of the card. So I have chosen Season's Greetings. I'm gonna ink that up 
in my cherry cobbler ink. And we want this to be right in the middle of the card. All right, that looks lovely. All right, then I'm going to take my holly and I'm going to add a couple little sprigs. So I have this little holly sprig and I'm going to just tuck one in over here and over here. Okay, so that looks good. And then while I'm stamping this, I'm also going to do my back panel. So for that, I'm going to use my cherry cobbler and I'm going to do tidings of comfort and joy. And I'm going to put this up here like that. And I'm going to add another little sprig of my holly. All right. So I'm going to close my ink up and I'm going to go and I'm going to color those leaves now. And again, I will speed the camera up. I just love how vibrant they get when you blend it with a blender pen. All right, so now we're ready to add our gates, if you will. So they're gonna go on either side. And so they go pretty much top and bottom, okay? And they're gonna meet right at the middle. So that's why I said when we were placing um, the die onto the um, panel, the white panel, um, I said put it all the way to the edge. So now, um, I'm going to add my adhesive. I'm going to stick this first one down. Okay, if you prefer, you can use some tear and tape or you could use seal. But I think that the multi purpose glue works pretty well for me. So we're going to add another little bit of glue. Okay, I'm going to turn it around so it's easier for me to position that one. Okay. All right, that looks great. So now I have some ribbon. So this is the um, the combo, which is the real red and burlap combo. And you need about 21 inches, but um, I usually just tie my bows right from the spool um, to minimize waste. So I'm going to go ahead and tie my bow here. Get that. If I can just grab it here. Well, let's try that again. Sometimes when you're doing bows, you could use an extra hand. So let me go around. There we go. And then I gotta adjust my bow. All right, so that looks pretty nice. And then all I have to do is uh, trim this edge. I'm gonna trim this one just a smidgen. So then I like to do it without adhering it so this can slide. So then I can move it in place. And then here I do use a little bit of seal. So I'm just gonna move it out of the way, put a little bit of seal down so I can hold that in place. Okay, so there we have this and it's ready to go on our shaded spruce panel. So again, we're gonna add our adhesive. And this is just gonna center right on here. It's gonna look beautiful with that dark green. Um, I stamped this when I was playing around with it. I did stamp it in black to see if I liked it better with the black ink. But because of these other sprigs, I thought stamping it in the shaded spruce um, really looked nice. And then this panel um, can go right on the back. And then this will give you a place that you can write your message. Um, because that front part is so visible, you know, with those gates like that. 
So there we have the card. And so, let me see, where did I? I had my envelope. Um, for the envelope, I just stamped another one of the sprigs on there. So that is our gatefold card or fun fold card, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I had so much fun playing with these dies. Um, they're big. They're a lot bigger than we're used to. So I wanted to show you some other ideas of how you can use these beautiful um, deckled circles. Okay. So I'm just going to move some of these other things out of the way. I do want to show you something I was playing with. So I wanted to make something. I thought, well, I could do this really fun label. I wanted to use some of the big ones. And I made this. And it, to me, it looks either like a lemon or a football. I'm like, well, that didn't really speak to me. So a lot of times when I'm designing cards for my videos, I do play around just using scrap paper. So I wanted just to show you that. But here is my next card. I love this one. So I started out with the very largest of the circles, and then I just had a rectangle of Melon Mambo. Then I skipped down one, so I, I the third largest, and I cut this one out of Calypso Coral. This is Daffodil Delight, Lemon Lime Twist. Um, this is, I said Calypso Coral, yeah. Oh, Coastal Gabbana here, and Highland Heather. And then I used the just wanted to say dies to say feel better soon. And I used also those dies to add a flower for the inside. So isn't that a really fun um, way to use those dies and get the bright, happy colors? So I think that's a great one. Um, here's another Christmas card that I did. This one, I made this beautiful ornament. And I think I used, oh, I can't remember. This is about a three inch three and a half inch size circle. So I started out with a four inch piece of basic white and then I took strips of this designer series paper. This is the Joy of Christmas designer series paper. And I just did various widths of those, widths of those and I stuck them on my white. Then I cut out my ornament and I used some of the Distress Gold Designer Series paper. I just kind of freehanded the ornament topper. I used one of my deckled rectangles to make the bottom. This ribbon is really fun. This is actually bubble bath ribbon that I colored with my blends because I wanted to have this little bit of sparkle. And it's a really great way to extend the use of your ribbons by using your blends to color. So this is my Merry Christmas, Peace on Earth. Another piece of that beautiful paper. Love this paper. And that was my envelope for this one. This one I did color with blends, so it's nice and vibrant. Um, but I do think that this is pretty vibrant too. So I hope that you like both of those. Another great use is to show off your designer series paper. So this Christmas card is using the Berry Christmas designer series paper. And by using one of your large circles, you do get to focus and show a lot of that designer series paper. So that's sort of like the star of your card. And then I just cut out these, um, I fussy cut the bear and the tree from the Berry Cute stamp set. And then this is a new heartfelt hexagon punch. Added a little bit of ribbon, so this is a really quick and easy card. For this one, I just trimmed, followed the pattern to make a beautiful little edge. And then I put another one of those cute little bears at the bottom of my envelope. And of course, you can use these circles just like you would any other of our layering circles. So here I was using the Silly Goose stamp set. And this is the 6x6 Subtles Designer Series paper. So I colored this with my blends, add this beautiful little bow. And this ribbon, oh, it's a dream to tie with. So just a very traditional way, some more of those circles on the inside and there is that card and then my last one is featuring the pick of the patch so i used the burlap ribbon on here and this is it's actually the natural ribbon so it's the copper and natural ribbon combo but it is sort of a burlap and i put my circles in pumpkin or pecan pie rather and then i colored my pumpkins so i stamped them in the lighter color and used a sponge dauber to get little extra color 
on them. So that's the way I got the two tones. So I made this um, little Halloween card and my background is using the Stripes and Splatters 3D embossing folder. And there is the inside of my card uh, along with my envelope. So there you have it. These are my cards featuring the Deckled Circles dies. So I hope you love them. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Details for my card will be on my blog. Actually, I have a lot of details for all of the cards on my blog, which is the power of a card.blogspot.com. Thank you again so much for watching. Um, I appreciate all my comments that I get, and I hope that you share this video with others. See you next time.